Hello everyone, and welcome to the Cup of Nations rules and kind of factions review. Sort of the same thing that I did last year, we're just going to cover all the factions um, in the Cup of Nations, and then look at their rules, and then look at some like potential like armies, and then kind of judge how good I think those factions might actually play out to be. So, let's uh, quickly just talk about the actual rules real quick. I'm going to tab and look at them. So, the general uh, rules, the overall rules for all factions that can be overridden for individual factions, but the general rules are 4 same units max, 11 infantry, uh, that includes spears, 4 pikes, 13 cavalry plus foot missile units, so that's HA, any cavalry and any foot missiles except for peltists, so archers and slingers basically, 2 missile cavalry max, 1 elephant max, 2 chariot max, um, and two max elephants plus chariots. So you can bring one elephant, one chariot, or two chariots, or none. Or one elephant, basically. Um, or one chariot. Um, elephants and chariots count as Kev, and the general is included in all limits. So let's um, start out with RDAI. And so I'll basically just read out what their special rules are, and then we'll look at some armies. So RDAI has five melee infantry max. So that's going to be instead of... Well, I guess we didn't uh, write any melee infantry maxes actually in the unit limitations. I believe it's. Well, we'll see if it's written for all of them. Anyway, five melee infantry max, five same units max, and three missile cavalry max. So, looking at RDA, obviously it's a faction that's going to be uh, strongly influenced by the hoplites and the marines. So, we've actually not put in a limitation on marines plus noble hoplites, which was a thing last time, but instead we only have. Um, five melee infantry max so that's fine for RDA. they only have 11 infantry though so this is something i'd expect or this but i actually think that four marines is better than four axe warriors actually it's kind of tight it depends maybe on the faction so okay they, they can do this and then their other options will just be in the rest of their department so the free missile cab would always take that probably three cab and three slingers looks solid to me um and again you know, this is fairly standard. You basically just replace one Axor with an Illyrian cap, so you'll have a bit more cap support. You'll be able to block some more charges, um, but you will be suffering a bit more in the melee department. But that's probably fine, right? Because in the Cup of Nations, most factions are suffering more in the melee department. The fact of the matter is, you still got your four Hoplites, three Axe Warriors for a very, very strong melee line, and then your four Marines. Just throw their Javelins and get them in the melee, and you basically have 11 melee units that are all quite capable in the melee, although, you know, quite a few of them are Spears, so... Maybe that's not so great, but Cav and Slinger is kind of weak. Tarantine's pretty good, and so so this you know averages out to be pretty normal RDA. Now the five same rule will allow them to go five hoplites, for example, or even like three hoplites or four hoplites and five marines against like Parthia, for example, where you don't really need um, any sort of you know, cavalry force or, or, or melee force really. Uh, you still need a cavalry force, of course. Uh, you will still go through Tarantines, who will take some some Illyrian Cav here. Maybe like, uh, you know, I have two more infantry, so I'll get two Axe Warriors, of course, because I can. And then I'll get three Slingers, so uh, something like this. Okay, well, I have ten short, but I can go to a Celtic here, I can do whatever. Uh, this seems like a logical conclusion against factions like Parthia, um, because you'll hold a lot more javelins, and, and you can definitely hold it with a box here. Your Slayers have 50% block chance, all that kind of stuff, so not really terrible. Um, and so the, this 5 same actually buffs RDI quite a bit. I think losing like 13 melee nerfs them, but this 5 same allows them to be more flexible, which I think is good because RDI is usually such like an unflexible faction, giving them a little bit more flexibility is nice. And of course, in some situations, perhaps 5 hoplites would be the play. And then like two marines and four axe warriors and then just like i don't know four three and two almost whatever again maybe some of these are celtics instead but um the, yeah so you know five hoplites gives you a very very strong melee foundation so again those are also options so maybe against like tillis for example you don't want to take a lot of cav you get your three tarantines you get your four slingers and you just go for the infantry spam although again Maybe that's not the best idea. But anyway, RDA a bit more flexible than in the past, so kind of nice. Uh, next, we go to Arvasi. And again, uh, interesting thing for Arvasi is Arvasi or Lusitania. You get the you get double factions, like you get Arvasi and Lusitania in the draw, and you have to just choose one for the entire tournament. Um, 
because they're both kind of similar, but they're, you know, we didn't really think they're that good, so you get a choice. Um, now, their special limits are 5 saving max, 12 infantry max, 7 melee max, and 4 missile calf max. Um, so, Arya, or Arvas is quite strong, I would say. Uh, I would be going for, so 7 melee allows you to go, for example, 4 painted, 3 scutarii, something like this. You also have 5 same. So let's maybe go five paintings and two scutari for now. Um, you know, we can get like some some cav. We can even get five cav if we want. Uh, I, I think they'll be quite strong in the rush department. So you know, I gotta get two jav cav here. I can get up to four, but contabrate's kind of low, so I wouldn't do that. And then, you know, I can get, so 12 infantry total. I have seven here, so I could even get, uh, you know, like a full melee spam, or I could get like some balerics. One balerick, four slingers. That looks pretty strong. I have a shit ton of cabs, shit ton of melee. Like, <laughs> there's no real weaknesses in this army, uh, except for the fact that these units are not very good. Uh, Celt Iberians are fine. The Cantabrians kind of blow. The Balearic, your Escher Slingers are just average. But okay, you have only melee, Slingers, Cav, and Jav Cab, which is a very meta type of army. Um, so this doesn't seem very bad at all. Actually, this seems quite strong. You could even go for something like this. Actually, no, you couldn't. Uh, yeah, you could, right? 13 total Cav and slingers so okay we, we have 13 cabin slingers and seven melee so uh yeah something like this also quite viable and i just think our yeah or Arvasi, sorry might be one of the stronger factions just because they can do a very meta um build but okay our not like the strongest faction so we'll also take a look at lusitani now uh, because they're the mirror faction so or like the faction you can also choose and they have six a max 12 infantry and six melee infantry max, but seven if you take uh, one extra sword that's less than 400 coins, and again, four missile cav max to help against the eastern faction. So six same, 12 infantry, and seven melee, but one of them has to be cheap. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, a loose tiny swordsman and, or an Iberian swords. Let's go with Iberian for now. Um, yeah, okay, six same, but you probably won't bring six Gujaria cav, but maybe you bring five, a couple of Jav cav, couple of slingers, sub slingers, something like this, and okay, this is solid, uh, you know, again, Lusitani struggles because they need to bring slinger power, so they don't get shot, and they don't have any spears, and they don't have a lot of infantry, like 5 cav, 2 jav cav, a lot of infantry, if the enemy doesn't, if you're not worried about jav cav, you could go for some spears, so, uh, maybe that's a bit better, but again, not having jav cav, it will cause problems for your, um, for your slingers, so, it's a bit risky, Lusitani, Always going to be dangerous for sure because they have just so much melee potential. Good slingers, good cav, not great cav, but but okay, they're not they're not terrible. So decent faction overall, I'd say. I'm not sure which one's stronger between them. I think both of them are very similar. They both take a very meta armies in terms of a lot of melee, a lot of cav, jav, cav, and slingers. Um, so, so that's very strong. Um, and both of them do that quite well. Lusitani better melee but worse um, cav because they're on the noble cav and you know, weak to missiles, Arvasi kind of worse melee, but better slinger cav combo, basically. And they can take a bit more strong infantry, so but then all the general, but they have a noble horse gen, so it's a you know a toss up there. I think it's quite close, maybe just whatever preference you have. Uh, next up Armenia. Armenia, twelve infantry max, five melee infantry, plus one hillman, um, two cataphracts max, and 11 cabin foot missiles total so two cataphracts is annoying for armenia because you basically have to take the royal cataphract and one cataphract i think that's the play here you don't want to take an azot knight you don't want to take a noble spearman so there's that and then probably two cappadocians and a noble blood or maybe a persian cav i think persian cav should see some use here because they're actually quite good uh they're basically thessalians and thessalians are quite strong units so yeah why not bring the persian cav get a little more shock power because again you're not going to be using your general too much in the early game so this gives you a bit more shock potential you have two strong Cappadocians and the extra cataphracts so you know that's nice um cataphracts also include the noble horse archers i believe i'm not sure if actually let me just check part three real quick where is part yeah hello oh um i yeah i think noble horse archers are going to count to the cataphract limit so okay we'll take some regular horse archers and we have 11 total so we can go three horse arch or no they have two horse archers max so it's going to be something like this just looking at their rules again real quick 
Yeah, so it's going to be something like this. This could be a double blood, whatever. Two, two war searchers, four slingers, and the five cav seems like the best option. You could also go for six cav and three slingers and two war searchers. Seems fine as well. Um, a bit more expensive though. Infantry, just going to be four cartley. I mean, that's for sure. I would, from there, say, just probably two hillmen, to be honest. Don't see the need, need to melee spam uh, much more than that. And now you have money. Actually, do they have five same, though? No, they do not have five same. But you have a lot of money left over here, so... I don't know, maybe armored horse archers is an option. Or just, like... This. And this. And then, like, I don't know, three sort of spears or some shit. But they have options here, I, you know. Don't really love this, to be honest. Three Eastern Spears seems kind of AIDS. Um, but they could, again, they could go for more Cav, drop the Axemen, and then get two Hillmen and three Eastern Spears. Looks like you're going to have to, because, okay, you have 11 Cav and Slingers, and then you need to get nine Infantry. And four of them can be Cartley, and then after that, you have to go into other options. So Armenia has a strong base, but they have a lot of weak units as well. So... Strengths and weaknesses. Three slingers. This is going to make you rely on your infantry more. Or can you... Oh, you can't because you can't go to 12. Uh, calf. So yeah, Armenia, a bit... Definitely kiting has been heavily heavily nerfed there. So, you know, they can rely more on their infantry. They can also go for, like, more infantry-heavy ideas with, like, two four cartley and two regular axemen. Stuff like that. Uh, could definitely be on the op option. Or you could go for armored horse structures as well. Um, play that game. Arverni, three same of infantry for infantry and six melee infantry max and three good swords max. So this is like the new idea for the con is like three elite swords or like a certain number of elite swords for given factions. And here elite swords includes chosen swords and oath swords. So, uh, you know, with three, you're going to want to go two oath swords and one chosen, maybe two chosen and one oath. I'd say definitely get an oath sword. Um, but then the rest of Arverni is looking very similar. They're going to be going for four heavy horse, noble horse general. Or potentially four heavy horse, no horse, or Oathorn general. Not sure about that though. Uh, four slingers. And then, like, what, three? You could get naked warriors here. This is an option to go naked warriors because they're a lot better than Celtics, but now you're just out of money. And you can't go four really free because you need to go um, three infantry, say, max. So, you know, something like this could be on the it could be an idea. Or you just go like this and you get more spear warriors so okay they have options here uh like two oath sword very powerful base chosen sword another good me melee infantry and then you can just support your celtics with your spear warriors i mean it's not great but you have a good cav force really strong cav force fine slingers annoying levy freeman good spear warriors the best like mid-tier spear or like you know 500 or under spear basically uh good javelins overall and this can obviously hold, and against like Parthia or whatever, you just go for cheaper. Oh, so, like maybe no Oathsworn, one Oathsworn, and then just get like a fuck ton of chosen spirits and shit. But yeah, one Oathsworn, and then like a levy for yeah, something like this, or maybe you go more infantry, right? You get like. Actually, that might be too much infantry they have. Yeah, that's one too many infantry, so I guess you can't do that. But yeah, anyway, they have options for sure. Obviously going to be annoying against Javcav and stuff, because you have to deal with it with Levy Free, but you know they don't really have a better option, so that's pretty much that. But yeah, 11 infantry kind of caps them, especially when they get the 6 melee, but maybe you don't even go for, like, against Parthia, perhaps you don't even go for Celtics. Like, why do you get Celtics against Parthia, who can't even take that many good infantry? Just get the three chosen, or the two chosen in Oath, and then, like, get better spears instead of these Celtic Warriors. So now I have three uh, Spear Warriors, three chosen spears, something like this. I don't know exactly, maybe three chosen and three, or two level free, something like that. I have a lot of money left over as well. Um, there, so, yeah, definitely options in that case. Uh, next up... Athens, is Athens in the main pool? Nah, we'll get to those factions later, so we'll go to Bactria. Now, Bactria, 
will be a, a very strong faction, I think. Five same, twelve infantry, seven melee max. And obviously that they only have two melee units, five thorax and two hillmen, so you can you can get five thorax and two hillmen if you want. Um, twelve cavalry and foot missiles, six missile cav and foot missiles max, and three missile cavalry max. So they have a lot of rules, so but basically here's the idea. So you have twelve cav and foot missiles max, but only six of those can be HA and foot missiles. So the base of your army is either going to be four slingers and two horse archers, or three and three. There's no other option. Then you fill out the rest of your cav to twelve, so you can get a general in, in the cav, and then one, two, three, four, five other cav if you want. So let's say and they have five six, so you could go five noble horse for example. But again, like, you can go for this, but do you really want to go for this is kind of the question. Because sure, you have maxed out your cav and missiles and all that, but now you don't have any money left over, really, and you're going to go for, like, some weird kind of... I mean, you have, you have a good amount of money, I suppose. Like, I can, can do that, for example. And okay, we have four mainline infantry here, and we can play with our six cav, very strong cavalry force, and okay, this will be fine. You could go for a Thurios instead of a Pike, or maybe you go for like, I don't know, four. Nah, it seems like we just can't do that. Barely though. Uh, so, so some options here, they could also go for like, Cataphracts. You know, they have Elite Horse Archers, Elephant potentially, which again will count towards the Cav limit. We could be getting some, some Pikes in there, we can get in some, you know, only like four Noble Horse. This is looking too expensive, I guess, the fucking elephant. Uh, you know, four. Four slingers. Three and, like, four. Or three. No, man, something like this. I don't know. Seems like, yeah, again, they have a lot of options. The elite horse archers, they can go three horse archers as well. So, that's always good, but then, of course, you have to go three slingers. So yeah, good options for Bactria, it seems like they'll be, you know, in play they also have the good Peltis, if you want to take the Bactrian Peltis. They're pretty solid, not great, but solid for 480, you're getting 10 Javelins. Precision Shot and Quick Reload. Elite Archers as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, Tarantines potentially could be good in some matchups. A lot of options for Bactria and a lot of, you know, potential armies because of the, the diversity of the rules. Uh, Boys Band, so Carthage. Carthage has 5 same, 12 infantry, 6 melee infantry, and 3 missile cav, which I don't think they would take except against the east. So, uh, with 6 melee being the kind of main thing, probably want to take a pretty solid core here. Although in the past, Carthage has gotten away with going for, like, for example, when I would play Carthage, I would go for this. Um, something like this. I don't exactly remember what it was, but it was like... It was probably this. Uh, so that's an option. You kind of have to go Balearix here because you don't have any cheap slingers. That's annoying. Pikes are also an option for Carthage. You could go like four Pikes. Like four Celtics. Two Sam Knights. There's your six melee. Something like this. No new minions. Like, I don't know, four slinger, four elite missiles and some Kev. Out. Maybe you get Scutaria here. Now you're going for pikes, but okay, you can defend your pikes with your missiles and you have good cav. So, yeah, good good options here for Carthage. Uh, you know, the playbook is open for them to do whatever they want, pretty much. Um, 12 infantry is a lot of infantry. Uh, 5 same, so I don't know what you'd spam 5 of as Carthage, really. Libyan infantry, maybe. Seems like the only option. Maybe 5 Carthaginian cav. I got elephants, but yeah, maybe five uh, late living hoplites. I'm not sure if you would really go for that, but yeah, so Carthage seems pretty diverse. Next up is uh, Colchis. Samaria is not in the tournament. Colchis. Who has pretty strong rules again, I would say. 12 infantry, 5 melee infantry, with 7 uh, total if you bring 2 hillmen, so it's 5 plus 2. 4 missile cav max and 8 missile cav and foot missiles together. So <laughs> that's always very strong because so many factions are limited. They can go 4 HA, uh, like let's say some blood cav, we can go 4 horse archers, 4 slingers, and they have 5 same, right, so 
Or do they? No, they do not have five steam. Okay. That makes more sense. So, you know, we can go for this. And then we can say... Or maybe we take, like, a Lancer gem. That probably makes more sense. And then four. four blood. Actually, that might be too many. Yeah, we should have probably put, like, 12 or... or yeah, probably, like, 12. Max, Cav, and AJ. Because they can just full kite, basically, with this. Like, literally just go five slingers, three horse archers, five cav. And then, like, four and three. I mean, you still have a shit ton of money here, so you go, like, a bunch of noble there. Like, this seems probably too strong, IMO. Because, like, how are you killing, like, a fuck ton of slingers? Their infantry is not going to be great in this case, but they have five good cav. Uh, it looks too strong for my taste. I think the best thing to do would be to put it at 12 slinger or 12 cav plus missile units um and that way you'd have to take either four cav which is not a lot to defend your slingers or like three ha and four slingers and five cav or something like that i think that would be a rule suggestion i could make um because yeah it seems a little strong just because they it's like cultures is like from somehow the only faction that can like full kite and they can just do it so effectively noble blood cav eastern slingers Eastern horse archers. Like, that shit's all, like, really strong. And then, like, not even bad infantry. Like, Cartley are good. Hillmen for extra jabs. Lancers, if you want to go for shock out. So, very strong overall. Next up, uh, Epirus. Epirus got five same, 12 infantry, six melee infantry, and three missile cav. Um, so, pretty standard stuff. I think Epirus will look uh, about as normal as you're going to get, so... Like, and they have 13 total units, you, know, so you can even go, oops, not that. Like, two Tarentines, four Slingers, two Rodians, three Sam Knights, three Italians, and, uh, I don't know, Therios or some shit, like, whatever. Or you go for, like, five Slingers, this, and, like, a Militia Hoplite. So, normal Epirus stuff, I think you'll see very standard builds like this. If you want to go more infantry heavy, I wouldn't take a Royal Peltist, I'd just go for Pikes. Fourth, a couple of Tarantines, like a Rodian and two Slingers. Can't quite get that. Maybe you do something here. Oh, or maybe you go like, yeah, you probably just do this. So, again, more infantry heavy. Play with the Shock Cav. Three Slingers, two Tarantines. Not bad as well. Probably wouldn't go this heavy on Pikes, to be honest, though. Can almost get two Rodians. That would be sick. Um, but no. Maybe there's some other way to do it, but okay. You know, Epirus again, gonna look very standard because they've always had six melee. So, yeah. Galatia, six melee infantry max, and three Galatian legionnaires max. Army pretty much writes itself. You could go for three nakeds, but Galatian swords are gonna be a hundred cheaper and are still quite good. You're gonna get some slingers, some archers, maybe some of both definitely those guys maybe two Galatian Raiders maybe probably better just horse skirmishers the same thing and then you're gonna spam these guys and then maybe get a noble I would say a noble is actually a good idea here just to buff up your infantry line um, maybe depends and here I've already obviously have three naked so I could like cut naked for Galatian swords and then get in there Collision Spear, so that looks pretty solid. Again, you can go like two Noble Horse, also an option. So, Cav Heavy, Glacia. With like, again, maybe even this. Galatians, probably gonna go for the Galatian Swords. I mean, that looks pretty solid as well, so maybe more Cav, less uh, Spear support. But now you only have three infantry that can actually do anything, so it's a little risky, but you have good Spear, or good Missiles, good Cav, good Archer, uh, good Jab Cav, so. Not terrible. Um, I, yeah, overall, maybe you put, uh, nah. Yeah, maybe if you have a nobleman, you put your general in there. I don't think so, though. Uh, but yeah, Galatia's gonna look pretty standard. You can also go for Galatian Raiders again instead of the horse skirmishers, but not always worth it. Can be, can be worth it, though. Um, 
they are just slower and they take so much damage from enemy HA that it's a little annoying and also these guys just kill calves so effectively. But having the melee capability of the Glacian Rear is also not terrible. Um, next up, Getai. And they have 5 melee infantry but 7 with uh, 2 Falksmen, so 5 plus 2 Falksmen, 3 missile calves max. So this is going to look uh, you know, very normal, I would say. Here's your 5 melee, you get 2 Falksmen. Run with like 4 cav, 3 HA, some spears, 4 archers, the use. And you know, with 7 melee, you don't need to get so many spears. These Falksmen are good against cav. Your cav force is weak, your archers are not great, but they, you know, they could do a lot of damage. Hard to kill them, not really worth killing them because they cost a little. You have 3 HA, good sword force here with 3 uh, melee. You know, it can definitely work. Problem is you have to have your gen in the noble sword. You can go for a noble horse gen, but it's just so bad. Maybe you go something like this. Maybe you still go this. Let's see what we can do. It's gonna be tough to actually afford all this shit, I feel like. Yeah, close, but not really. I mean, you could go like one less archer. Probably good idea. So it doesn't seem terrible. Noble horse gen said. A bit less cav. Four spears, but three noble swords and a noble horse. Three archers, still three HA. Not the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, Geta is going to look pretty Geta ish, but having that seven melee is nice because, uh, you know, two extra Falksmen just to be a little beefier because they lack so much in the javelin department and in the cab department. But their spears are good. You know, they're always pretty solid, so that's good. You can also take the Thracian Cav instead of the HA for jabs. Probably not though. Uh, next up, it's Icini. Five same and five melee plus two uh, under 600 cost units. So you can take the Druidic Nobles XD. Uh, but okay, Icini is going to look very standard. Five same though does allow you to go for this strat. Five slingers. Maybe five cow. Probably not. Her up Noble or two. 5 melee, plus 2, a couple of levy free. You got 5 slingers. Good amount of melee because you get these plus 2 swordmen. These flingers are, so are very solid, of course. Sure, we can. Oh, we can not quite put that down. Cab's gonna suck, as usual. Fucking terrible cab. Very annoying, but oh well. What are you gonna do? They also don't have a cap on elite infantry, so you can bring all 5 elites. So they're gonna be very strong, I think, actually. They just suffer in the spear and in the cav department against Arverni, but like, they're gonna have so much more infantry than Arverni. So I'm not sure like what Arverni is really doing here. And the slingers are just like such a threat with 23 damage. So yeah, I mean of course their generals also worse. These guys, are, I mean all their units are worse, but like the chosen sword band are basically the same as regular sword band or as regular chosen swords. And the Hurt Nobles, like, whatever, because they have so many more. Because our Verni is capped at 3 elite, right? So they're going to be bringing the 2 Heroic Nobles versus 2 Osworn, 1 Chosen Sword Band versus Chosen Sword, but then 2 Chosen Sword ba uh, Band and 2 Sword Band against, like, 2 Celtics and 2 Spears. Basically, it's a, it's a match of your fight you're going to get with these 5 Slingers. So all you need to do is not throw away your Cav, and I see he's going to be uh, very strong. Against Eastern Factions, going to be harder, to be honest. I don't know if this guy is going to happen, but... Me and Sarah were talking about rules for factions that are weak against Cav. So, like, if your faction is plagued against Iceni or Rome or Kush, you would just get, like, some caps on, like, Elite Cav or Total Cav or Cav plus HA or something. Because some ca you know, factions are just terribly equipped to deal with, like, HA and Cav. Especially, like, Kush, Rome, and, uh, and Iceni would be the big three, I think. Nabatea to some degree against HA, but they have good Cav, so it's kind of okay. But Kush or Kush, for example, has just like shit Cav and shit Slingers. I see he has shit Cav and no HA, and that Kush has no HA at Rome. Just has no Javelins, shit Cav, and no cheap Slingers. So it's like very hard to defend against HA and Cav. Like Parthia, for example, fucks Rome. But even if they don't get those buffs, like I see you'll be okay. But against Parthia, like I don't really see the, how you win. To be honest, like you have to go for like two Uruk Riders, three or four Bender Riders. The good thing is your Slingers will be okay against Eastern Slingers. I guess that's, that's a buff. You probably go for like five saves and just spam Chosen Swords. Get like a couple 
we'll switch these guys and just go for this. That seems like decent enough to fight against Parthia because Parthia's infantry is so weak. But like, is it really winning? I'm not sure. Not great, but it's fine, I guess. I don't know. Kush. 12 infantry, 6 melee, and 2 elite. Elites only being armored shotels and disciples. So 6 melee and 12 infantry. Pretty much. You're gonna go for this. You're gonna get 4 slingers. You're gonna get some 4 desert cow. You're gonna get maybe pikes. Okay, I kinda overspent here, I guess. But... Uh, the money all ran out. Maybe do this. I like pikes as Kush because their weaknesses against Cav get mitigated by the pikes. Uh, Shotels, Epidemics, Force Slingers, good Cav. Well, not good Cav, but Cav Spam. Good Spear Support. Um, you know, can be done. Kush is going to be very good against infantry. And like I said, with ICD, they're going to suffer really badly against Cav factions. And probably there should be a rule to uh, fix it, basically. Maybe even not even going 6 melee, just going 3 pikes, 2 Epidemics. And three Jotels. Looks pretty good. Against Eastern Faction, you know, like more when he had Kush was going for like shit like this. Uh, you know, you get your guys here. Maybe you go for just like a really weak sword core because you have epidemics, you don't really need that. Uh, but they're just so bad. Oh my god, they're just yeah, a terrible faction pretty much. Try something like this. 460 left. I got max spear, or max tree, or melee. Maybe five slingers. I don't know. Maybe try elite archers. Not sure why you would do that necessarily, but maybe. This guy's could be okay, like just to like focus on the recap or something. Also got chariots and elephants, so again, yeah, against infantry, they're gonna be chilling. Against everything else, don't know, I'm not really sure. Lusitania, we went to, so Macedon's next. Their rules, probably same as Epirus, no, slightly different from Epirus. Six same, 12 infantry, 7 melee, and 3 Javka. So, 6 same, you can spam 4 X swords if you want. Let me go for like this. They're kind of out of money. Just go for more slingers. But really, realistically, I think it's going to be more like this three and four. Three Tarantines, four Thessalian General, five slingers, something like that. Of course, they also have Peltis, they also have Marillions, uh, you know, Aspis Companions potentially. They have the cheaper Thracian HA. Just not sure what the best combination of infantry is. You could also go pikes. I guess you probably want to go for three Thracians. You're going to go pikes just so you don't like run out of money. And again, just like four Thessalians. And here I have all the money left over. So here I could go for two Thracian Cav. Something like this looks pretty good. Good Cav power. Just hard to build good armies with Macedon, it just seems like they run out of money, but this looks decent enough, like, you know, given the weaknesses of other factions, because the con rules, this seems like it'll be okay, it could definitely take on, like, Epirus, their closest rival, um, for sure, because you got an extra melee unit, and equal cav, obviously, so, not terrible, pretty similar to Epirus, just a little harder to make armies, because the Samnites just outplayed the Thorax so hard. And against the east, I don't know. I think you just take three Tarantines, couple of Slingers, Pikes for sure. You have Shock Cabs, so you can tie down Parthian, uh, Cataphracts and stuff by just countercharging. And you have Pikes to die Yolos. So it's not really terrible. Thracian's also very good against Cav. High weapon damage, bonus resist Cav, all that shit. So yeah, Mastodon looks pretty solid actually. And again, you can also go for like Kite Armies. Should you choose like Brilliance. The problem is you just don't have cheap infantry to like, put as part of your army. I'm always, yeah, just a little short. So, something like this. Maybe like five or four slingers and one Rodian. 
Can you get this? That looks pretty, that looks a lot better. Not great, maybe you go for like two, and then two pikes. Good options. Just hard, yeah, hard to build armies for Mastodon in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I've seen, seen worse. I think it'll be a fine faction, to be honest, like it'll be totally fine. Try to avoid bringing citizens, unlike the Italians, Cav for Epirus, don't really try to bring citizen Cav for Macedon, would prefer to see four Thessalians in a companion, or even like three Thessalians in a companion in some situations, just because citizens are so worthless. Next up, Numidia, they just have 5 million infantry max, so they're going to be pretty hard nerfed here, but the good thing is, you get this 5 infantry core, that's very strong. Uh, you get four Peltists or whatever. You get two Javkav. Now this is the biggest nerf is they can only take two Javkav. I think you go for probably Shock Cav here, or maybe like one Shock Cav and a couple of Melee Cav. And then you just spam the fuck out of your Spears, get two lays, get like one of these guys. And a bit short. I could potentially go Peltist Chen and a Ridge Cav. So, you know, this looks fine. Good Melee. Good spears, the four peltists are gonna be crucial for you know late game. And with four cav, like sure you don't have the Jav Cav power, but in general everyone has less Jav Cav, so it's not terrible. And all of these guys are your strongest unit with four cav, your peltists are gonna be well protected with good spear support, good infantry support. Um, your peltists are gonna be good in the late game. If you use the peltist well, you basically have nine melee infantry. So it's really not so bad, is it? For Nvidia, they just struggle to control the map as well with only two armor dominion cav and factions with three or four horse archers will you know lock them in on themselves but that's not necessarily terrible for Numidia because again their infantry is just much stronger than my, many factions so not not the worst thing um other than that i don't think there's any like secret armies like you could go for shock cav like i said instead of armor desert cav just cheapen out in other areas but there's not really much else you could also go for like yeah like, if you want to like go for shock cav maybe you go for like this Instead, you can look to two of these guys, get some peltus. Everything's gonna look pretty similar. Got a little bit of extra money here, but don't go for the guy Tuli Tribesman, only go for the Numidian Lights. Guy Tuli Tribesman suck. There's no armor, literally zero. <laughs> so they just die insta, pretty much. I'm not sure what I would do with the rest of this money here, to be honest, but. Oh, I could. No, I can't do that. Um... Not sure, but whatever. Again, shot cap definitely viable. Not a problem. Maybe if I like one, let me just try to rebuild that real quick. Oops. Uh, let's see, four pelotes. I'm gonna go for two or desert cap instead. Uh oh. Yeah, so you could do this, right? Yeah, there you go. So all I did was I just went from four shot cap to two and two, and that allowed me to get. An extra spear, so our extra good spear, and these guys are decent in melee. They got cap counter tactics, good defensive stats, obviously, so not bad for a spear. Massilia, no, Massilia. Next, twelve infantry, six melee, three missile cav. So Massilia, gonna look very standard. You can go for like the cav spam armies that some people like to take, because again, you can just you know fuck, totally spam. Of course, you can only go six melee, so like, probably like this, and then you get like some Sicilian hoplites. Oh man, look at that. Oh, whatever. That's an art option. If I go for like this, I can like drop these guys for turn times. So, tons of options there. Massilia, you know, in the past, other Massilian armies have been like, you go for like four hoplites. You go for six barbarian infantry, the cheap ones. Get like your two or three Javkov, a couple of slingers, and then like a lancer. Oh, so close. Well, again, you just do that. Or you go for like this, also an option. Massilia, yeah, good because they have the hoplites and good and cheap infantry, but these hoplites are not great. Really, you know, they're good, but the culture nobles out outclass them. The Sumerian nobles outclass them. Veteran hoplites are kind of better for the cost. But you have good lancers, good cav, tarantines, just you know, decent slingers. You have the archers if you want them. These guys are actually pretty good. 
just keep them out of, uh, you don't want to, you know, trade missiles with them, with enemies, with these archers, you want to just shoot high value targets, basically. But the good thing for missiles is you're going to always have a lot of capable melee, which is always useful. Nabatea, up next, uh, 5 same, 13 infantry max, 6 melee max. So, this pretty much writes itself, 6 melee, it's going to be 5 axe warriors and an Nabatean sword if you can afford. The axe warriors are much, much better than the swords. You want to go for pikes here, like 3 pikes, get some archers, spam with cav, get 5 nobles, seems to be the play. Uh, what do I have left? Uh, I'm trying to think what I actually used to take. Let me just... <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. Oh, my God, stupid. So let me just rebuild that. Let me real quick. So, was it 5 melee only? No, 6 melee. Okay. 3 pikes, 4 archers. And the killer is to get these armored desert hoplites. They are very, very, very strong. So this was the army I took every match. Nabatea pretty much towards the end. Except against like specific factions. Very strong because these armored desert hoplites are basically veteran hoplites. Very good. Great charge for a hoplite. They will kill shit. You have pikes. But your infantry sucks balls. Like your infantry is so bad. But you just sit them behind pikes and delay for your archers to kill shit. These guys are just Syrians with good melee stats. Don't be afraid to use them in melee when they run out because they have good health, very good weapon damage, low attack and stuff, but it doesn't really matter. But the weapon damage is quite nice. Um, and yeah, just like don't do too much missile wars with these guys. Just shoot key targets, shoot down the enemy infantry really because you have good cav. These are basically Cappadocians, a bit worse than Cappadocians, but still pretty good. You have really good spam in terms of infantry and then you have four elite archers. Problem is Javcav pretty much is the main one, and just like good infantry factions can be annoying because like you just your infantry just sucks, your pikes morale, and also just morale for Navate is god awful. 50 morale, 35 morale. That's why the axe warriors are much better. They have much better morale. But like even your elite hoplites have 55 morale. Your cav has only 55 morale. If your general dies, nothing is disciplined except for the hoplites, so everything will just route. So yeah, tons of problems for. Uh, for these guys but also like some good strength and obviously like these are this army is exactly the same as the one i took last year so that doesn't change for them they can still do good things not very fun to play though and your army is like pretty standardized you could go for like a hoplite spam but these hoplites are not really good as your main line these guys are good when they're just like a few of them that can like plug key points but they're not really gonna win against enemy infantry and these guys are just so bad like they're just the worst for the price so it's hard to win in the infantry war, you have to rely on your cav and your archers. Cataphracts, kind of bad. Heavy, heavy lancers, kind of like overpriced uh, Thessalians, but they do have better charge. So, or is it better charge? They have better something, maybe it's better attack. Yeah, they have better charge and better attack. So, not really like the worst thing in the world, you know? They're also heavy and these guys are maybe very heavy. Yeah, so I mean, they have actually have a lot of advantages over the Thessalians. It's just like, if you lose your cav too early with Nabate, you're fucked because your archers are going to die. So, it's a risk to bring these guys, but like two of them can do good things for sure. So, good options for Nabate. Um, Nervii, six melee infantry, four good melee infantry, and three missile cav. So, four good infantry includes Fierce Swords and Oath Sword. So, something like this. You can get naked again. Let's go for Celtics for now, though. Actually, let's get a little horse gen. Yes. They got these Javkov. They got Slingers. They got shitty spears. It's pretty much classic Nervii shit. Basically, Nervii just says we'll have less spears to have three Javkov or two Javkov. And their spears are kind of shit, so it's kind of a trade-off that you'll take against other barbarian factions, the ability to have Javcav to get off of their slingers, and then just play for the late game with your own slingers. You get two Oathsworn and two Fierce Swords, because Fierce Swords are kinda trash. You could go for like the Oathsworn strat where you take like four Oathsworns and shit. Don't really recommend it necessarily, but like you could try. Because then you only go for Mighty Horse, you don't have that much cav, but you can make it work. It seems like you can't actually afford 
this necessarily. There. Done. Can work, honestly. Actually, you can't get... No, no, this is 10 to tree, yeah, so this is fine. Um, if you want to go for 4 with sword. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it, though. Because your rest of your army will just die. Mighty horse, not really that good compared to heavy horse. For whatever reason, their stats seem so similar, but they just always lose. So I'm not sure what happens. 60 armor, 90 health. Is that where the difference is? Yeah, 10 less health. Okay, that's a pretty big difference, to be fair. 47, 27, 10. 47, 27, 10. So worse attack. 39 charge, 42 defense. Yeah, worse melee defense. So the worst melee defense and 10 less health is pretty killer on these guys. They just die so fast. But they're decent cav, you know, they're pretty much the same as heavy horse. Oh, they're also medium. Oh, yeah. that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. Medium versus, of course, the heavy horse are heavy. So medium mass means they do a lot less damage on the charge. Um, you know, they also have these naked spears. Don't underestimate these guys. They're very bad when they get charged, but when they support cav fights, they will fuck shit up. Because 25 bonus versus large, cavalry counter tactics, good attack, good charge. Good melee defense. These guys are good just except for their armor and they're very light so they cannot take charges. But having Javcav, very useful for a barbarian faction. So Nervii, I think Nervii I Senior are very are supremely well balanced at the moment. Um because again Arvernia just has the, the best units, so they have less of them. But also the best spears, the best swords, the best cav, they literally have the best everything except for missiles. Nervii has Javcav and they have four like better Mid tiers, well, I guess they have both sword. They don't really have better mid tiers than I see, but they have both sword. They can get four elite units versus th or th versus three for Averni. They have the Jav Cav, slightly worse Cav, slightly worse Spears, uh, and then I see he has the better Slingers and more melee. So take it as you will. I'd say Nervia are probably the weakest of the three, but uh, it's hard to say. Cause sure, I see he has more of everything, but like, can they suck against Jav Cav? I see he really struggles against Jav Cav. So I'm not really sure. Maybe I would take Nervi over Asini, to be honest. Not the easiest call to make, though. Um, let's continue, though. Our Drusians get skipped, so it's Parthia. And Parthia has 12 infantry, 6 melee, 5 cataphracts and Parthian swords combined, and 3 max cataphracts. Um, and then 11 cavern foot missiles, same as Armenia. So they can take 3 cataphracts and 2 Parthian swords, or 2 and 3 Parthian swords, or 1 cataphract. Parthian swords. Um, but any one of those combos, and again, noble horse archers count. So you could also go like, well, no, they count as cataphracts. So you can only go three cataphracts. So you could go like one cataphract, two noble horse archers, and then two Parthian swords if you wanted to. Also be allowed. So Parthia is very one dimensional, but we've, at least I will say, we've given them their identity, which is to be annoying as fuck with kiting. And, you know, they can go with only 11 total um, cabin missiles. So something like this would be standard. 5 cav, 4 slingers, 2 horse archers, or 3 slingers and 3 horse archers. One of the two. Get the camel cataphracts. You have 3 cataphracts, but you have worse melee cav in Armenia. And you can't go for as much infantry as Armenia. So you gotta play off that one cataphract advantage pretty heavily. And also Parthian Surge are quite a good unit, but... Yeah, you can go for like something like this, two and four, and then get like hoplites, I think is the play. Something like this seems pretty standard. Like you're going for hoplites, they're not great, but they will buff up your melee line a little bit and help you in that case because you just don't have a lot of Parthian swords. So Parthia are going to look a little different, but I think we've kept their identity a lot more than in previous years when they were just like really weird. Now they're, you know, they can kind of do what they want. Maybe they go for it in some cases. Let's say a faction doesn't have horse archers, you could go for like, like this. No horse archers of your own, no cataphracts even, get four Parthian swords. And then like three hoplites, or I guess like two and one. Or maybe you go like this, you get like two cataphracts only. And then you go for like an army like this, which also seems pretty decent. If we could only get to four and four. Uh, or sorry, another person hoplite or a person hoplite there would be good. 
But yeah, options for par three to go pretty missile heavy, but again, only pretty much you're only gonna see six. I think, okay, you could technically see four slingers or like three slingers, two archers, two horse archers could be an option. And only four cab against factions that really have shit cab. But you don't want to do this in general, it's just too risky. And you're not really gaining enough compensation here. And again, we haven't even gone for three cataphracts, so maybe we go for like three cataphracts. One, uh, one noble blood, two. And like this potentially is an option. Don't really think that makes a lot of sense though. Four cab and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven missile units, HA plus foot missiles, doesn't really seem great. But Parthia, of course, strong cav, strong missiles, good horse archers. Infantry is going to be tough, but let's see how the hot plates perform. Maybe they'll, you know, acquit themselves well over the course of the tournament. I would be interested to see. <laughs> Next up, uh, Pontus is Pergamon's gone. 12 infantry, 6 melee infantry, 12 cavalry and foot missiles. So. Okay, I mean, we're gonna go for this. 12 cap and foot missiles essentially means with four same. And only two HA allowed. It's probably gonna be this. Oh, you have extra? Eh. You could go for five. But I don't see why you would. I think you would even go for like a noble plus here. Four slingers, two war archers. Or you would go for like, yeah, like three slingers, two archers. Four slingers and one archer, even if you were kind of like not ADHD about it, you could go for this. And then infantry-wise, you know, you can get some Pontic swords, you can get some naked swords, usual shit, and you can just fucking get some bronze shields and regular pikes or some shit. This actually seems like fine because the bronze shields will buff your melee line. You have the three naked swords, good cav, good missiles. Not against this, really, to be honest. Um, otherwise, you could go like two Royal Cav, four Kappas, two and four here. This just seems quite strong, like even against, again, against like factions like Kush or Rome. Don't really see them beating this because, again, they're just so weak against Cav, but these six Cav are going to have such a big impact. The, the four Eastern Slingers are going to have a huge impact. The infantry is not that weak because they're supported by a very strong Cav. You got Pikes, Pontic Swords, good for the cost. So yeah, good options there. Also, the Pontic Peltis might come into play against some other cav factions. But again, they're gonna have more cav than like Parthia, for example. Although they won't have any cataphracts, so you know, maybe not so great. But they'll have better infantry than Parthia. They can have pikes, more slingers, potentially, or more cav, or more melee. One of the three, or two of three, probably. Um, so Pontus, yeah, pretty strong. One of the stronger factions, I'd say, just because they're also very diverse. You don't know what they're gonna be taking which is a huge advantage. Um, cause some of the factions, their armies are just like pretty straightforward, but Pont is not so much. I think they have a lot of options. You, know, you could also like go for like four Royal Cav and some options, uh, and some, some armies and go for like six cheap infantry, like behind pikes and go for like a super rush attack. Like, some horse archers and maybe even slingers here. I could probably get like two broad shields on this. Well, I don't even need to run. I can get more conditions. Like, yeah, there we go. Four shock cav now. And just like rush and then kill their cav and play like game with four Eastern Slingers and two more Your infantry is solid. You have a couple of pikes to like support your infantry line. Probably wouldn't go for this, but again, they have the option to, so you have to be aware of it. Uh, Egypt, I don't know if they're in the main pool or not. Rome, up next. Rome has three same units, six melee infantry max, three good swords, which are 660 plus, so the cheapest legionnaire and above, three elite missiles max, and three missile cav max. Honestly, Rome might have been nerfed too hard. <laughs> Obviously, now that I have Rome as my faction, I'm saying that, but they at least got their six melee back because they don't have enough javelins to really deal with their faction. I kind of wish they could go for four missiles, but... I agree, it's probably too OP. The problem with Rome is just their general options suck dick. Like, if you, if you had a real general option, you could make such better armies, but you have to waste a unit slot on the Legados for general and bodyguard, and now you're at 19 units. And that can be very hard to, like, recover from. Gonna see a lot of Triarii from Rome, I think. Um, that seems like the theory at the moment. Just spam Triarii, because they're very good. Triarii are very underrated. Um, really good attack for a spear. 
good good damage really good defense armor health morale so they'll be strong just no javelins really sucks um only three max shot cav potentially an option as well for Rome. archers versus slingers the eternal discussion there what's better mm. just trying to look at their rules again three good swords so yeah no 11 infantry max but i mean that so you know you could go for armies like this maybe they should also have force save allowed seems kind of strange they don't Maybe not. Uh, I don't know, maybe something like this. But again, when you only have nine or you only have 19 units, it's kinda of tough. But you can see, like this army doesn't have a lot of weak spots. Like, these equites are not great, these vigilates are kinda of throwaway units, but everything else is pretty solid. Three of a Kadi cohort, gonna be very nice. Praetorians are an option for Rome as well. Um I just wouldn't take the Praetorian Guard of the Praetorians would you? Uh, 20 for five more armor. So let's say you take these as your elite units and you go for like, you know, like some sort of top heavy shit. You're always gonna see three Sestadi. You could also get gladiators, but I don't really see why you would do that necessarily. They're not very good. Um, and then like, get like, I don't know, three of these guys, some Cav, some Numidians. Uh, there we go, get the gladiatrices for the Cav fight. Again, now your infantry is even stronger, but you don't have the Triarii, you have better Cav though. Again, I can also like replace these with Triarii, so I guess that's fine. And these could be replaced with the Equites from before. Or like Legionary Cav or some shit, I don't know. Legionary Cav are pretty aids though. If you look at this, like all their stats are worse than Sock Equites. Literally all their stats except for armor. So you don't really want the Legionary Cav, is basically what I'm saying. Medium, socket days, heavy, so yeah. And against the Eastern factions, they just don't have enough javelins to really compete with Eastern factions. But you know, we'll see. They have new minions at least, can help them. They maybe could go auxiliary cav, they have some shock cav, archers could kill cataphracts, but it's just not very clear where the wind's coming from in those situations. Um Yeah, or you have eleven infantry here, I could like I don't know, you could go for, again, you could go for like, this, a weak cav, but very strong infantry, because again, the Shriari are going to be one of the better spears in most engagements, so they'll be quite nice, can buffer up against other spears, win that fight for you, your Evocati or, or Praetorians are going to kill infantry for you, it's just a matter of the cav fight, and basically I think your archers or slingers are going to be crucial in this, in killing enemy cav um, at the right times. So Rome, interesting faction, not probably that good to be honest, because of all the nerfs. Four same would help them, I think. I think I might try to get that implemented just so you can take four socket twos. Pretty much the main thing, and potentially four vigilates. Those are all things that might be good for them. But even then, I don't know if you would. But anyway, Rome, pretty good options. We'll see what I come up with for this faction since it's my own faction. Uh, I guess that'll be more uh, more in depth, so haven't really thought about it yet, but those are just some ideas. Next up, Saba's gone, Scythia's gone, Seleucid's gone, Sparta gone. So Swaby comes up next, and we're almost at the end. Swaby has 12 infantry, 6 melee, plus a club levy, 4 missile cav. So nice for Swaby. They can pretty much bring a normal army. 4 missile cav. Two Jav Cav, or two Noble Riders, this is what I always bring for Swaby. Seven melee infantry if we get a club levy. Sure, why not? Maybe a couple of Swordmasters. It's basically the only question, the, always the question is Swordmasters or Woden as? Is that seven or eight? That's seven. So, like. This seems like okay, I guess. Area Vistus, of course. Slingers, so you don't die to missiles. Uh, you have four Javkai to harass and protect your flanks, and then you just Area Vistus charge into people. Or alternatively, you go like one Sword Master, you get Wolf Warriors or Berserkers. I prefer the Wolf Warriors. 
And then you get an extra wound as in the mix. Maybe you go like two club or some shit. I don't know. More like a less less slingers and more spears. Not exactly sure with Soybee, but again, the foundations are there. You just rush into their infantry, you kill as much infantry as you can. You have two cav, four cav cav, and four slingers to win the late game with whatever of your infantry survives. Swordmasters, Berserkers, Wolf Warriors, all gonna be critical for that. Kimber Bowman, also an, uh, an option. Very good unit, these guys, 380. Uh, but they also have spears, so the cav can't really kill them. Can be useful. Riders of the Hunt, don't buy them. They suck. Always just take four scout riders, one or two noble riders. Well, there's options for one noble rider, but you, I like to have that second noble rider because if the enemy runs away from your, your area of business, you just charge them in the back with your cav. You don't really want to do that with your gen. You don't really want to do it with your scout riders. So you kind of want to have another noble rider, but this could be good if you're going to catch them anyway. Go for like this. Get like three or four Wodenas. I might have too much infantry though. How much infantry can I get? 12. So I'm already like over the infantry cap. But you know, something like this could definitely work. There we go. There you go. Four slingers. Three Wodenaz. One Noble Rider, but I get two Sword Masters, three Wodenaz, and a Wolf Warrior. Definitely want to have one Wolf Warrior in there because of the fear or Berserker. If you prefer Berserker. Uh, but I just don't like the Berserkers because. They're so small of a unit at 60 men, and they just die because they have no armor. I'm sure they have good health and good morale, but like, they just die, and they just don't kill anything. So it's kind of risky. I like the Wolf Warriors, they scare like the Berserkers do, but they have full uh, men, and with area this is they'll still fuck shit up. So that's good. And finally, uh, Delis. Five melee infantry, four good melee infantry, and four missile cav. So Tillis likes way because that four missile cav to go to. Four Raiding Horse, such a good unit. Really great melee stats, really good armor for uh, the Barbarian Raiders, which usually have pretty shit armor. They have 45 armor, 75 health. If we compare that with the Galatian Raiders. 15 armor, 70 health. If we compare that with the uh, Thracian ones. 40 armor, 75 health. So they're the best, the most armored. They have great melee stats still. They're fast. They're efficient and they'll get the job done. So, yeah, two, two noble cav, four raiders seems like the, uh, the ideal. Four good infantry, so one Osworn or two Osworn. Probably one here. If we get two noble horse, we're only gonna go one Osworn. They have five melee infantry, so you're gonna have to take one Thracian or Celtic potentially. Want to go for spear warriors to protect because you have such shit cav. And then if I do this, can I do this? No. But, you know, whatever, I can, can make it work. Level 3. And then put this guy back to it. Now I have all the leftover money anyway. But something like this, you need the Spear Warriors to like buff up your melee line, protect your flanks. Raiding Horse with 4 HA, you're gonna out HA most factions. I uh, could have gone through like. You can also go for like Thracian Peltus instead. Damn, so close. Oh, go back to six anyway. So now you get like three Slingers, two Peltists. And then, you know, your infantry line is going to be a bit weak, but you have two Spear Warriors and two Level 3, but the two, th the two Thracian Peltus can come into melee, so is it really that weak? You still have two Cav. I'd also say for Tillis, one Cav is fine, unlike Swaby. Swaby, you need the other Cav for the reasons I suggested, like chasing after shit. But with Tillis, you're gonna play defensively. So you could go for it like this. Four Spear Warriors, four Slingers, and like this maybe. This could, okay, I have a lot of money left over. What can I do with it? Hold on a second. I don't know, something like that could be good. Osworn, one tribal, one Celtic. Also an option. Raiding horse are so cheap too. Oops, sorry, I got some. This seems fine as well. Three Osworn, one tribal. You still have good support in the three spear warriors and the three letter tree for your, for your cav defense. 
You have the four raging horse, the four slingers, so you don't lose the missile war. This could even become a Thracian, be even better. So this army actually looks quite solid with three Osorn. Um, you know, much like the Nervii army, except you have more Jav Cav, but no melee Cav. Just have to deal with the melee Cav somehow. Somehow, some way, with Tillis, and you'll be fine. And the Raging Horse will play a big role in that. Your Spears will play a big role in that. You don't want to lose too many Spears so they can actually contest Cav and not just, like, get charged. Because, again, you're not going to get any units dragged into Cav fights as Tillis because you don't have any Cav. So your Spears have to actually, like, take the brunt of Cav charges and, like, do damage with Javelins and their counter cavalry counter tactics to actually win. So we can also quickly go over the reserves. So Athens. Again, like most of the factions are here, either in the main or the reserve pool. Athens with uh, six same, 14 infantry, seven melee, three missile cav. Pretty strong. But if you compare it to like Mastodon, for example, eh, you get the veteran hoplites and the four or five or six thorax swords, I guess. But it's just tough to make armies because you only have citizen cav, and it's just so bad. And then like, what do you do? You get like three, three slingers or something, I guess. Eh, not terrible, to be honest, not terrible. But again, it's just not, uh, not really what you want. Oh, I got a three shit super rude, for fuck's sake. I can't actually afford this army. But I don't know what we should do to save the Thorax Hoplite, right? Athens can also go for infantry spam. This, like, a couple of Thorax Hoplites, maybe. And then just, like... I don't know, this is kind of, like, out there. As a strat, but... Can I get two assistants? I can't, so actually it's not terrible. And you're just gonna play with your Thorax Hoplites in reserve. You have a good amount of this, you have good Slingers, you have two Tarantines. You just have no Cav, but you don't really want to buy Cav, because your Cav sucks. This is only 11 infantry, so I can get way more. But I don't really see how I can do that without, like, running out of money. And also, Athens can go, like... Like, heavy missiles or some shit. Like, Lancer, the fuck up. The problem is they just have no cheap melee, so I guess they can't really do that. Because, like... They also don't have cheap pikes. So... Yeah, never mind. This actually might not be a play for Athens. Close something here but maybe you go like cheap slingers more thorax swords that's an option i don't know athens kind of sus that's why they're in the reserve pool egypt six same 14 infantry seven melee four missile cav not actually egypt seems fine to me with these rules uh, i gotta find them because basically with seven melee what you want to do is just go for like and they have like what, six same or five same? Two Glacian Rogard and five carried Axemen. That's really the play. Get Pikes. Get like two Tarantines. Get some Egyptian Cav or Citizen Cav, doesn't really matter. And then like get some fucking Rodians and Chief Sluggers and then just call it a day and play with the Javelins and your two Glacian Rogard. You could also go for like some mad shit like. Ptolemaic Cav. Always would get the Ptolemaic Cav, but you can go like four, and three, and then just like fill everything out with two units, like maybe three of us and shit. Okay, maybe you really can't go four. Three and four. Well, what if you went? Okay, we're going for this. This is like pure chaos strat. So it seems like four Galician Regards and that guy. Three. Four Carrions. Got the Carrion General for now. And then we can go like. You know, three Cav, two Tarantines, so maybe four Cav for now. Pikes. Let me throw O's. Something like that. We don't have any Slingers here, so that's not a bad deal. But this could be like a Rush Strat. Total Infantry. They can go 14 infantry, so that's not even a problem. But, buy something like this. Not terrible. But again, the cab is so bad, it's kind of hard. 
Odrissian, 6 aim, 14 melee, 8 melee infantry, 4 missile cav. Again, you can go for crazy rush strats with Odrissians. 8 melee, so, sure. I don't know why they need 6 aim, doesn't really seem necessary. Oh, wait, let's, can we even, like, go crazier? Actually, we don't want these guys, really. Could go for something like this. Bit out there, strat, but... A strat, nonetheless. Get some cheap spheres. Get some peltas. Not sure that you want to actually go for that. Uh, you could also, like, just go, like... Get some Peltus, get some Jaco, get some Slingers, or Spears, or something. By that you have four Peltus, you rush in with your Nobles and your other infantry, you just like do as much damage as you can on the charge, the Peltus clean up, the Jav Cav are annoying, but you have no Cav, so it's like, can you actually hold this, could your Peltus even live, why not, not sure, Odrissians have always been tough, so whatever. Pergamon, 6 aim, 4 missile cav, and no limits for infantry. 6 aim, 4 missile cav. So, I mean, you're gonna wanna get 6. 4, maybe only like 3. You know, you can go for Pink Peltis, Pikes, and only a couple Lancers, 3 Lancers or something. That could be good, you can go like... This is you're always gonna have, these, these two things like, you should always have. I don't know, you could go like this, four, only two or two lancers, or three lancers, go for like slingers. Maybe go like four lancers actually, maybe five lancers actually. This seems okay. Five slingers. Don't know what you're gonna do with your extra money here though. But like this is like a full kite army. With just bad slingers. Maybe you like drop one of these guys. Get like some of this gun. It's like a hybrid kind of army. And you got four slingers, six these guys, good Tarantines, good Cav. Just shit infantry of course, but you can still win the kite with four slingers and three Picultus and four shock cav and three Tarantines for sure. But Pergamon just hard to use, I'd say. Seleucids, six Thorax swords, but other than that, five same. 13 infantry, eight melee infantry, three missile calves, so meh. I mean, take a Hellenic Cataphract. I mean, what? You can only take one elephant, right? So elephants could be a thing. I'd say like a good six. Say six thorax, two of these guys, six slingers, some shit like that, some fucking wyland shit. I mean, there's options here. There's certainly options. Oh wait, that's way too many. Well, not way too many. Just one too many. Maybe. Honestly, in my opinion for solutions you should just full kite. With six slingers. Get like a couple of Medeans, two Tarantines, and then just like fill up the rest with whatever you can. Oh, these are real cool. Boom. That seems winnable. You have two Cataphracts, decent melee cav, six Eastern Slingers, four Thorax, or three Hill, two Tarantines. Seems okay. I would not underestimate Solucids. I think Solucids are very good. Just because six. Eastern Sl oh no, it's five. My bad. Okay, I'm returning. That actually makes things a lot fairer, to be, <laughs> to be honest. I'm very glad that's a rule. Okay, there we go. Uh, sort of the same, sort of different. Definitely not as strong. But, Seleucids, I think, still have five Eastern Slingers kiting, or, I mean, you don't even need to do that necessarily. You can just go like. 
for the two Syrians, for example, or Persian light archers also exist. So that could replace the slinger set to get six, six slingers. Uh, but infantry sucks, not many options. Sparta, I'm not even going to talk about. They're so bad. They only have one rule, Sparta. I'll, I'll talk about Sparta. They only have one rule, five pikes, max, anything else, whatever you want. So, you know, you can go. I would definitely take five pikes. Just try to defend. Four ghost skirmishers, it's an option. Get like a couple of those guys, a couple of Sizen Kai. And maybe I can get a real Spartan or some shit. Or a hero Spartan. Boom. Problem is, your cav sucks. You can't protect your slingers, your pikes can only do so much, and your infantry's bad. So, Spartan is just trash. But they can try. With these rules, I think, you know, there's so many options. There's some options, just very hard. And finally, Syracuse. 6 aim, 14 infantry, 7 melee, 3 missile cav. Syracuse, the only problem with them is they have no cheap infantry. It's just so hard. It's like, do you really go for this spam of melee? And then, like, what? What do you even get? Like four slingers? Do they have five slingers? They have six aims, you can go five slingers. Two turn times. Like, this doesn't seem terrible. Three turn times. Uh, I can't quite get a thug, sorry. Pop light, I mean. But if we do that, I can. So, okay, we have three turn times, five slingers, really good melee spam. Four thorax, three sandmites, and a thorax hop light. But. As usual, they just have no cheat. You can't really get cheap units, so your melee line engages, and then every everything else just dies. So it's not really great. But Syracuse, I think Syracuse is probably the faction of the reserves that's like it's between them, Egypt, and Seleucids for which ones like are the best to add to the main pool. I'd say it's really between Seleucids and Syracuse. Don't really like Egypt that much, but I think Seleucids and Syracuse are like pretty viable at the highest level. <laughs> but anyway, that's all the factions. Quick review, all the rules have been reviewed. Uh, good luck to everyone playing in the tournament. Enjoy. And uh, we will be posting my, my games at least, or whatever other replays I think are really good. I'll try to get those, post them, commentate on them, and we'll see how it goes. Should be a fun couple of nations. So good luck to everyone playing, and see you in the tournament. Peace.